Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this week we are looking at Gateshead's Exemplar um, Neighbourhood. This is a bit different from anything else I've previously covered. This is more actual planning policy which is going on at the minute. Um, if you're not aware, Gateshead's Exemplar Neighbourhood. This is the area next to Trinity Square, towards the top end of uh, the high street of Gateshead, near the Civic Centre, all the way up to sort of Gateshead International Stadium. There's a number of sites around here. There's former railway yards, there's a lot of disused land around the high street. And all this land, um, it's been bought up over time by Gates of Council. I think they're the majority landowner in the situation now. And um, what they're proposing is a new SPD. Uh, they're at the moment, they're looking at consultation on this. So what we're gonna look at here is gonna look at the comparison between the current proposals and what the original 2013 SPD did. The reason Gateshead's updating this is because they say the 2013 SPD is now out of date, too much has changed and they need a more relevant, more up-to-date uh, plan to help them sort of make this development come to fruition. So that's what we're going to assess today, that's going to look through. Um, yeah, so we'll dive in on that. So, this is the original SPD for Gateshead's Exemplar Neighbourhood. It's quite good at actually illustrating what the site is um, and you can see there's Trinity Square and it's the area sort of residing to the south of that and to the uh, south of Gateshead High Street. Um, as you can see it's bounded by sort of the rail link going to Sunderland as well as you can see Gateshead International Stadium and sort of um, at the bottom of the pitch you can see it's bounded by the civic centre of Gateshead. So it's quite a large area of land that's located close to Gateshead Town Centre and it's a real great place for sustainable development but as you can see, um, at the moment, there's not actually that much development there. Um, a lot of it is now um, unused commercial space. There's obviously not the major commercial demand for all these units. Um, the creation of Trinity Square, which is obviously in, in construction in this photo, has sort of centralised all the retail core into this specific area, which is a better idea than having it so dispersed. So this makes it ripe for sort of redevelopment to sort of sustainable housing close to the town centre. So the original, to, um, this is the original SPD, uh, they want to sort of a special identity neighbourhood, a family neighbourhood in the city and sort of to be make it well connected with the idea of using green spaces, high quality public realm, uh, improved transport links, paths and bridges. One of the core aspects of this whole proposal was actually, um, if you know the site, there's Gateshead Highway which runs through it. This caused a massive barrier between the uh, town centre of Gateshead and its sort of surrounding areas to the east. What this proposal was aiming to do was to remove the highway of, uh, that currently runs and connects to Time Bridge and replace this with a city boulevard. Um, if you want to sort of an example of what this would look like, I think they reference James's Boulevard on the um, other side of the Redhue Bridge in Newcastle as sort of the overall concept of this. It's a four lane road um, with obviously turning lanes at junctions, but it's a much better space for cyclists and pedestrians, um, as well as sort of changing the hierarchy of the road. So obviously there's a major physical and psychological barrier of the state between the town centre and its sort of residential hinterland. If you'll see in the current proposals, there's a major change between this and that. This map is really useful for explaining sort of what the site is and where it lies. And you can sort of see how currently this is very undeveloped land. There's the old rail depot, which is um, disused at the moment. And this area could really be a sort of high density neighbourhood close to the town centre. If you look to sort of the west of this, near Windmill Hills, the old terrace streets that still remain are a much better example of what housing should be like towards the town centre. It should be really high density. So the site is actually bounded by two metro stations, both Gateshead, which is a central station for Gateshead, and also Gateshead Stadium, which lies more towards the east. So this makes it a very highly sustainable place for its connection to Gateshead Town Centre, but also for the, the west of uh, Tyne and Weir, due to its links elsewhere. And then this is the useful uh, master plan. It sort of shows what they would like to go here. So this is Gateshead Council made this document themselves, and this shows sort of the development they'd look for here. As you can see, sort of the highway gone uh, with the new boulevard, the Nexus tunnel that runs through the site, which is obviously a constraint and the, the site boundary. And then this shows sort of the overall development cells and open spaces they're proposing with uh, the use of City Boulevard, the new depot layout. And what they're proposing is really flexible uses around the boulevard, which is interesting to see. 
and the major changes it was proposing. Um, if you type in Exemplar Neighbourhood Gateshead, you'll find this link to this um, interactive map that they're now using. This is so you can comment on here, you can put any proposals in, um, and you can sort of see the overall, uh, the new master plan for this area. So, one of the key notices of the site is the previously freight site, which you saw in the last bit of the video, has now got plan permission. As you can see, it's um, DC 2020 full. And this is um, obviously approved and waiting to be constructed. There's also the St. James's Square has been constructed. Um, if you pass Gateshead at the minute, you'll see this has been built and looks to be really nice, high quality. And again, um, I'm not sure if it showed in the last images, but the uh, area by Gated Stadium, sort of Lincoln Gated Stadium Metro and the stadium itself have all been developed with uh, flats and apartments and sort of semi-detached houses. So this is when we get into what's actually proposed for the neighborhood. So each of these things you can click and you can sort of see what they're proposing. Let's, so the major thing we should talk about in this proposal is if you remember from the previous one, Gateshead Highway was due to be removed and replaced with City Boulevard. This has now changed drastically in this latest proposal. Um, I'm not sure if you saw over lockdown, Gateshead uh, Council tried to implement this um, proposal as it is now. They tried closing one of the lanes of Gateshead Highway and putting a cycle path on top. So as, I said, as it says here, the new cycle path is proposed on one side of the highway, providing a quick and direct link for cyclists. This is this is a very interesting proposal to even start with. I, um, I can't really think of any examples that have done anything like this um, to create a cycle network. I would prefer much more to have the city boulevard and to remove this highway completely. But I think it must be down to like the costs of removing this and sort of the overall expenditures of cost to replace this with a boulevard. And I think putting a cycle route on here is almost the cheapest option they can go with. Which I think it just it falls into that option that is I don't think it'll be high quality um, space. So yeah, that's one of the largest changes you have of this whole proposal. With you can also see some of the original open space still remains in its designated areas. But now this is no longer fronted by the city boulevard. The the nature of the space changes completely. It no longer becomes sort of a break on the boulevard of the road. It more becomes a park next to a highway, which again is just so much less desirable than what was previously proposed. And you can see a lot of High Street South will be demolished for this. Um, I believe some of the demolition of High Street South has, South has already started. And um, obviously we replaced with these sort of rows of houses and um, flats. The, the main downfall of this cycle route will be, cycling is a mode of transport which really focuses on its ease of access. So you want to be able to get on your bike, not get stuck on any sort of motorways or anything. You just want to get point A to point B, no matter the, quick, the quickest way possible. What the issue with the highway will be is that you'll be on a highway raised above the ground and say you want to take a turn, you'll have to wait till the, the actual place to take the turn. So unless you're traveling long distances, you won't want to join Gateshead Highway Cycleway. You'd sooner take this lower cycle route, which I, I mean will really impact on the actual use case of this cycle route. So then a lot of these other things show different types of um, spaces they're proposing. One of these is these sleeping what they're calling live work houses. This is accommodation that can also provide a studio space within it, which I like the idea of bringing more than one use into this area rather than it just being simply housing. And um, there's a lot of good concepts in here. So this is obviously proposing of roof terraces, which is great to make the use of um, more of these spaces, make use of these rooftops um, and these sort of flexible living spaces. So if interesting to note, um, as part of the site is these Tynegate towers. I believe there were originally four towers, but one got demolished or one never got built, which is this uh, grey blob here. So the three of these towers remain. One of them has recently been refurbed into uh, apartments. I believe they're originally office towers when they were constructed. But they sort of form this um, sort of almost like four fingers. Well, what they're proposing is to fill in this missing gap and complete this sort of tower arrangement. So you can see here they're proposing a new lower tower in between tower two and three. Which I think is a great idea to sort of bring this back, but I think this image really demonstrates the overall issue with this plan. The at first SPD said the biggest issue for any development here was the highway causing just an unpleasant link. It prevented people physically and as I said in the document, psychologically from entering the town centre. 
aspects, but not addressing that key concern, these places are going to still feel cut off from the town centre. I believe they are making some road improvements and um, removing sort of the horrible underpasses that existed around here. Again, you can see a new cycle path here linking into the town centre along Sunderland Road, and these junctions sort of being realigned to flow in better, sort of benefiting pedestrians more rather than the sort of car friendly environment that currently exists. And then here you can sort of see a 3D of High Street South. So as, as this currently lies, there are a number of vacant units, a number of derelict plots on High Street South. As Gateshead Council owns the majority of this land, they, they're able to do what they want with it, and this is obviously their proposed housing, as I said, great idea. But for what's meant to be an exemplary district, and um, sort of a revolutionary housing concept, it doesn't feel that way to me, it seems to be going very textbook yeah, they're accommodating a mix of uses, a mix of people, and the different accommodation types, which is great. But they they've just sort of resorted to typical houses, front and back gardens, whereas a more modern approach probably would be looking at more communal spaces, more communal living, especially this close to a town centre. And then one of the only things on here, other than housing and um, a few uh, open spaces is a temporary food and drink place which they use some stock image of shipping containers um, and they want to activate the public space next to this gated highway with some shipping containers i think activating this public space is a great idea and obviously shipping containers are a cheap way to do it and it, it sort of has success with precedence in newcastle with uh, stack and uh, by the river brew company as well as out in seaburn there's also the um, stack too. But yeah, that's the main changes between this uh, one and the original one. I think for me personally, the, my take on it is Gateshead Highway needs to be removed and replaced with a city boulevard in order for the scheme to be fully successful. I feel this this sort of master plan not addressing that issue as is its root cause. It's it's not really solving that issue. This is just the outro. So we've, we've looked at the sort of differences between Gateshead Exemplar, district, neighbourhood. There's some major changes going on here. Um, I think the overall picture is that it's going to be great to see some development happen here in Gateshead. Of, um, they're proposing quite high quality design. Obviously there are some issues um, as we've discussed and I think hopefully this consultation will let local residents bring that sort of issues to the front and um, hopefully these can be sort of resolved through this consultation process. But yeah, thanks for watching.